Warning, if you or a loved one suffer from clinical obesity or compulsive eating disorder, or if you've been told you're at risk for type 2 diabetes, insulin resistance, or heart disease from excessive belly fat, then this video presentation could very well save your life. Additionally, if you suffer from thyroid issues, hormone imbalances, chronic inflammation, and even if you believe you're at risk of certain types of cancer, it is critical that you continue watching this brief presentation. Within minutes, you'll discover a universal wellness technique that has been in use for thousands of years. Yet it is only within the last 20 years that the Western medical establishment has begun studying the potential benefits of this regenerative technique. Dozens of studies undertaken during this time point to an astounding number of physical and mental benefits from just this one technique alone. For instance, medical research indicates that this technique has a dramatic effect on a half dozen or more essential bodily functions, such as hormone regulation, metabolism, immune system, mental recall, improved sleep, and cellular regeneration, which can help fight off aging. This technique is literally wiping out medical conditions by stimulating the body's regenerative capabilities. Prominent medical journals, internationally renowned strength coaches, TV personality naturopaths, and well-known nutritionists all attest to the power of this medical miracle technique and its regenerative qualities. In fact, you'll hear from a half dozen such individuals in just minutes. What's more, achieving these regenerative benefits does not require any kind of strength training, cardio, or exercise at all, nor will it require going on a particular diet or nutrition program. Many established strength coaches combine specific diets and workout routines with this technique to achieve results that would have taken months or even years to achieve with just diet and exercise alone. This amazing technique thrives with or without fitness training and diets, making it a powerful weight loss and health tool for individuals that have tried these methods and failed to see results. Most importantly, this system makes expensive supplements and dietary pills completely unnecessary. Millions of Americans open medicine cabinets every morning to reveal a pharmacy's worth of pills combating everything from inflammation and IBS to pain and cholesterol. This technique is helping everyday people escape their reliance on pills and prescription drugs by boosting their immune system, lowering their cholesterol naturally, and even reducing pain due to chronic inflammation. Due to its curative nature, this technique has drawn the attention of a powerful industry that is hell-bent on providing quick fixes over cures at all costs. But because this method has been so rapidly adopted by respected naturopaths and nutritionists, and because it requires no product or diet or a training program, there is little these powerful individuals can do to prevent its use. Within minutes, you'll hear from a former lobbyist of one of the largest pharmaceutical companies in the world. This individual is taking a huge financial risk to speak out about his former industry and share an incredibly powerful technique that goes completely against what the pharmaceutical industry has claimed in the past. The original video presentation may be taken down at any moment due to an ongoing defamation lawsuit. This introduction has been created due to repeated attempts to silence the author of this video. We urge you to watch this brief video and make up your own mind about the contents herein. If you've ever been concerned about excess visceral fat around your waist and its potential to cause inflammation, diabetes, and specific forms of cancer, you owe it to yourself to review this short presentation. Alternatively, if you are pre-diabetic but haven't been tested, this technique could reverse years of damage and correct your body's rapid tailspin towards insulin resistance. Again, we urge you to make up your own mind about the contents of this video. We invite you to review the same studies cited by the video's creator and seek out unbiased reviews online to verify its contents. This concludes our introductory presentation. We now present the original video featuring former Big Pharma lobbyist and Mount Everest climber Tom Banks Mills. Hi, I'm Tom Banks Mills. And this video, the one you're watching now, is the product of a lot of selfish thinking. I don't mean greedy selfish. I'm not doing this for the money. No, this video is selfish because I made it for me. I made it to atone for the rotten things I've done. I thought it might help me forgive myself. With that said, the powerful technique I'm about to share with you isn't motivated by selfishness at all. It's motivated by a desire to help others take control of their health, their bodies, their state of mind, and their success.
just like I did, using the exact same technique, to the letter. A few years ago, I had some serious health concerns, both mental and physical. I had hit rock bottom, pitch black, and this technique outright cured me, and I believe it can help you too. This technique is as powerful as it is versatile. There are many ways you can perform it, and it asks nothing of you. It doesn't even ask for your time. In fact, it will save you time and money. I know it sounds wild, too good to be true and all that. Hell, I wouldn't believe me either, which is why I'm going to show you the studies. Lots and lots and lots of medical studies by some of the most renowned medical institutions in the world. And then I'm going to share testimonials by strength coaches and world-renowned nutritionists. And finally, I'm going to show you people that have reached out to me after having achieved unprecedented health transformations with this technique. I promise you, the regenerative qualities of this technique are absolutely mind-boggling. Issues like chronic inflammation, immune system dysfunction, the onset of insulin resistance, obesity, and a dramatic loss of energy, all in remission by using this amazing technique. And that's just the beginning. Out-of-control hormones and depressive states caused by extreme stress are no match for the technique I'm about to share with you. Again, you shouldn't take my word for any of this. I don't expect you to, and it's in your best interest to let the facts speak for themselves. For instance, I wouldn't expect you to believe this method slashed my weight down and got me from this to this. Nor would I expect you to believe me if I said it turned me into a stable human being. A completely different person from the workaholic, stressed out, depressed madman I used to be. Although you could just ask my ex-wife. She'd tell you exactly what I was like. I don't expect you to believe any of that. But then, I'm not asking you to believe me. I'm asking you to believe people like Dr. Oz, who said this technique was, quote, the key to unlocking rapid and long-term weight loss, and could even improve blood sugar and reduce inflammation. That's Dr. Oz talking, not me. Or how about Dr. Michael Mosley, creator of the blood sugar diet and the fast diet? Dr. Mosley, while on the Dr. Oz show, in fact, told the story of how he received the crushing news that he was now a type 2 diabetic. His doctor's advice right off the bat, medication and the standard low-fat diet and exercise that everyone else goes on. Only problem is, it didn't work for Dr. Mosley. Not the medications, not the dieting, not the fitness training. He gained weight, had trouble with his insulin. It was a total nightmare. So it was nothing short of a miracle when Dr. Mosley tried the very technique that I'm about to share, and it completely revitalized him. His health, his weight, even his diabetes was disappearing. Or how about Charles Poliquin, world-renowned strength coach and trainer of some of the most well-known Olympians and sports athletes in the world. Poliquin has studied this technique more than most and has weighed both pros and cons extensively. His biggest takeaway is that this technique promotes a metabolically flexible body. According to Poliquin, being metabolically flexible may be the missing link in many fat loss programs because it reduces hunger and food cravings while improving metabolism and brain function. I don't know about you, but losing weight would be a lot easier if we weren't hungry all the time. Now these three individuals are just the tip of the iceberg. I haven't even begun to talk about the reams of research and medical reports detailing the benefits of this technique. We're talking prominent medical institutions, like the National Institute of Aging, part of the U.S. National Institutes of Health, which reported that this technique could improve biomarkers of disease, reduce oxidative stress, and preserve learning and memory functioning. Or the USC Davis School of Gerontology, which reports that this technique effectively treated a majority of cancers tested in animals, including cancers from human cells. Even prominent medical journals have spent millions looking into this technique. The American Journal of Clinical Nutrition noted that this technique has been shown in both animals and humans to improve glucose tolerance and insulin action, which indicates an enhancement in insulin sensitivity, to reduce blood pressure and the heart rate, which is consistent with benefits for cardiovascular health and to reduce oxidative damage to lipids, protein, and DNA. So yeah, I'm asking you to believe all those guys and gals. Because let's face it, they've been studying this technique for years, way before I ever found out about it. Man, do I wish I knew then what I know now. It's painful to think about all that time lost in a body I was embarrassed to have. 
But now that we're on the topic of who discovered what first, you want to know something really weird about this technique? It's literally thousands of years old. At least 2,000, maybe more. Almost a lost art in the Western world until recently. Which is frustrating because some of the most fascinating men and women to ever walk the earth have used this technique. Religious icons like Moses and Jesus, Roman senators and philosophers such as Pythagoras, and the often misquoted Mahatma Gandhi have all used this technique to great effect in their own lives. I could go on forever, but I don't want to take up too much more of your time. And I know by now you're dying to know what this technique is. I have every intention of revealing it in a brief moment. However, there's only one thing I want to share with you beforehand. Call it a disclaimer of sorts. But I feel my viewers should know a bit about my sordid past before making any decisions here today. I worked as a lobbyist for 15 wretched years at one of the biggest pharmaceutical companies in the world. I'd love to tell you who these guys are, but their litigation team has an associate keeping tabs on my every move. This company would just love for me to slip up and say their name so they can sue me into the ground. Hate to disappoint you guys over in litigation. <laughs> it ain't gonna happen. Anyway, there are only a handful of huge big pharma companies. So take a guess. There's a good chance you'll be right. So that's a bit of context for you. Now you know where I'm coming from. Now here's the thing about the pharmaceutical industry that most Americans either don't know or wish they could forget. The industry doesn't have a pinch of capitalism in it. It's a protected industry. International companies aren't even allowed to sell their drugs in the states. And pharmaceutical companies like Pfizer and Merck and others spend billions of dollars lobbying to the FDA to make sure it stays that way. No, I didn't turn America's pharmaceutical industry into a tiny cadre of monopolistic vulture firms, but I certainly didn't stop it from happening either. To my everlasting shame. If you want to know why Big Pharma gets away with addicting Americans to temporary drug fixes that combat symptoms but cure nothing, look no further than this one fact. It's a monopolistic industry. There is no competition. They can do whatever they want. Ever heard of Martin Shkreli, the guy who worked for Turing Pharmaceuticals and single-handedly raised the price of Diaprim, a drug that HIV AIDS sufferers desperately needed to stay healthy? up 5,000%? Yeah, I knew that guy. We'd have lunch together on Tuesdays. Anyway, America saw this whole diaphragm thing go down and wondered how that corruption could ever exist in a capitalistic society. It's because the pharmaceutical industry doesn't play by capitalism's rules. It's a monopoly. And in the case of diaphragm, there was no competitor to drop the price down. The FDA wouldn't allow it. Oh yes, the FDA. Big time. I wouldn't have been in charge of a massive multi-million dollar slush fund directed right at these crooks if that weren't the case. In Diaprim's case, the FDA was making sure no other competitor made it to the market, at least for the next five years or so. This kind of thing happens all the time. I'm being completely honest with you here. Just look at snake antivenom. God help you if you're uninsured and get bit by a snake. The FDA only allows one company to sell snake antivenom in this country, and that company sells it for $14,000 a pop. You know how much it costs in Mexico? $200. Sound fair to you? <laughs> sure doesn't to me. Not now, at least. Although, you wouldn't have heard me complain when I was making close to half a million a year. And I gotta say, after knowing everything you know now, if you straight up closed this video, it wouldn't surprise me, and I wouldn't hold it against you. I was paid millions to shut drug companies out of the American market. And by shut them down, I mean put small drug companies out of business. That's what Pfizer and Merck do. If they wouldn't take a buyout, they got the hammer. They were wiped out, their customers stolen from them, their reputations destroyed. And I hate to say it, but I was good at doing this. Too good. One of the best. In fact, only one guy was better, and I have a feeling it's because he was literally soulless. We're talking 100% psychopath here, ladies and gents. Only he didn't get his rocks off killing people like some psychopaths do. His control fix was satiated by destroying my shall not be named company's competition. I mean, this guy was relentless. We're talking the Emperor Palpatine of the dark side. He was also my best friend. 
Talk about being a good judge of character, right? Now you know why it took me two years to get up the nerve to create this video. Also, this guy isn't someone you want as an enemy. And publishing this video could mean I'm in his crosshairs in the future. No matter what the cost, however, this is a story that I feel must be told. If I don't share how I hit rock bottom, I'll never be able to explain why this technique completely turned my life around. I'll never be able to explain how it helped me rid my life of painkillers and other meds that were killing me without me even realizing it. Or how it brought me out of a near comatose state of depression. Or for that matter, how it helped me get in the best shape of my life. And as you've probably judged from this video, I had a long way to fall before smashing into the ground. In hindsight, it was the best thing that happened for me, really. And like many rock bottom stories, this one started with a simple dare from a good friend. You see, back in 2011, there was talk around the office that a big Mount Everest trip was going to take place. And Eamon Phelps, my dear friend and former coworker, and the guy I spoke so highly of just a minute ago, Emmer Palpatine himself, was leading the charge up the mountain. Of course he wanted me to go. Although there's no way you'll make it, not in the shape you're in, I remember him saying. And that pissed me off, because it's not like I was fat. At least, I didn't think I was fat. Fat for me was the fire department having to cut away a part of your house to use a forklift to get you out. And that wasn't me. My then wife used to call me middle fat, which I used to infer was some limbo between obese and chubby. Maybe someone out there can relate. Anyway, Eamon was getting the top guys to go on this trip with him. The best lobbyist we had. And even though I was by no means ready to take on the most intense trek known to man, I said yes. Of course I said yes. Despite having massive problems at home with my then wife ready to divorce me, I still said yes. Meanwhile, Eamon was in the best shape of his life. He was big on steroids. The illegal stuff, not the prescription stuff. Which is funny because he actually lobbied for the company that had monopolized legal steroids. He was at the gym twice a day, hardcore dieting. I hated him for it. He worked as much as I did and still managed to work in two gym visits. I think he made a pact with the devil to never sleep. I can't confirm that though. Anyway, long story short, the time was set. We waited for our window, and in the late spring of 2011, we flew to Kathmandu, Nepal. Once there, we took a gut-churning helicopter ride out to Lukla, then on to Base Camp 1, where we trained for three long weeks in the shadow of one of the most stunningly beautiful mountain ranges I've ever seen. It's at this point that I'd love to tell you I made it to the top. I'd love to tell you I stuck a giant Big Pharma flag smack onto the tallest crag of the highest mountain in all the land. But this isn't a fairy tale story, and I didn't even make it to Camp 4, or Camp 3, or 2. And what may be the most embarrassing moment of my life, I managed to slip along the icefall during training, breaking my hip, my collarbone, and my right arm in three different places. I also fractured my skull, and the concussion I received almost killed me. A team of Sherpas, which are the locals that live in the Himalayas, raced me down to Base Camp 1, where I was airlifted out to get treatment in Kathmandu. When I woke up, days later, it was to the news that the lobbyist team, including Eamon, had summoned Everest and were already on a plane back home. They hadn't bothered to pay me a visit. Not once. To top it off, my wife had left me a voicemail saying she wanted a divorce. She sounded sympathetic when I told her what had happened, but there was no changing her mind. Are you going to be back soon or should I just send you the divorce papers to sign there? I remember her saying. <laughs> Ouch. Send them, I said. I was in no mood to argue. It was around this time, about two weeks after I woke up, that the nurses rolled in a new patient, an Everest Sherpa from Tibet, who had been on an expedition and fallen down a ravine. Unlike my rock bottom story, this guy literally had hit rock bottom. His whole body was broken. He looked like a giant plastered mummy. Those first few weeks, we didn't exchange a word, which was perfectly fine with me. I was in no mood for small talk. In fact, I was in no mood to do anything, anything except eat, that is. While I couldn't see them, I could hear the shouts from food vendors and smell their delicious Nepalese cuisines from my bedside window. It made me an insatiable pig. I felt like I was starving all the time. My only relief from the pain was food, so I ate and ate and ate some more. 
While I can't be certain of this, I believe to this day that my skull fracture had given me binge eating disorder. Yes, that's actually a real disorder. Meanwhile, for the first time ever, I understood what depression meant. I was completely and utterly suicidal. If I hadn't been completely immobile, there's no telling whether I'd be here today. I was ready to end it, ready to end everything. After two months of this, I received a call from Human Resources saying I was terminated. And yes, they actually used the word terminated. I mean, what kind of company actually says that? Tom, you've been terminated. Have a nice day. But by then, I didn't even care. My body wasn't healing. I had gained 50 pounds. And I had the feeling the hospital didn't mind my self-destructive behavior at all because I was throwing wads of cash at them. You eat like a fat Buddha, my Sherpa neighbor said to me one day out of the blue. I glared at him. I eat like fat Buddha? Yes, he said, taking his arms and rolling them over his imaginary fat belly and grinning like one of those Buddha icons you'd see in a souvenir shop. Fat Buddha. I set down my rice noodles and Momo and said nothing. What annoyed me about this guy was that he had come in after I had sustained even worse injuries. And get this, only he was getting better. In fact, he looked like he was ready to walk out of there that day. You want advice? He asked me. No, I said. You are endangering yourself the way you act, he said. You lack discipline. What? I said in disbelief. I'm a well-known, or at least I was, a well-known millionaire lobbyist from one of the biggest companies in the world. Trust me, I don't lack discipline. Act like Fat Buddha, he told me. Don't look like Fat Buddha. What's that supposed to mean, I replied. Fast with me, he said. What, you mean like, don't eat, I yelled back. Fat Buddha is content. Fat Buddha practices discipline by being content in all things. You fast with me, make your body content, make your body disciplined, he calmly said. I don't know what it was about this guy, whether it was his intent gaze or total honesty or what. Maybe I was just lonely as hell and didn't know where to turn. I realized then that I had been broken for months, maybe years. Maybe I had always been broken. Okay, then, I said, you can tell me about fasting, but I'm not making any promises. He smiled. Smart. You won't regret. So I'm going to stop my story here for a second. Because I just introduced the technique I've been talking about this entire time. That's right, fasting. Or rather, a powerful type of fasting called intermittent fasting. Now, I'm going to detail intermittent fasting here real soon, in just seconds. But I have a feeling there are a lot of skeptical people watching this right now. People that can't believe fasting is the technique promoted by the likes of Dr. Oz and the American Journal of Clinical Nutrition. People just like me just as skeptical as I was before I saw this Sherpa's body seem to regenerate, day after day, like it was nothing. Like he hadn't just sustained injuries that would have kept him in a hospital for months and maybe left him crippled for life. I saw this with my own eyes, but even then, I wanted to laugh at this guy. Really? Fasting? That's like a religious thing, right? I couldn't have been more wrong. Or rather, sure, fasting has its roots in religion as a means of attaining a spiritual connection. But as the medical community has discovered, and as you'll soon be 100% convinced of, fasting offers far, far more to the human body than we ever initially realized. Just within the last 30 or so years, clinical studies have been documenting how fasting initiates a powerful, regenerative effect on the body, triggering a kind of universal refresh at the cellular level where every cell reacts in the same way. This is the science behind fasting. You see, our cells have two kinds of programming connected to our eating habits. We call those methods feast or famine. Most of us have bodies set to feast mode throughout the day. And that mode, when it persists for years and years and years, is why most of us today are unhealthy and overweight. In feast mode, our cells are programmed to know that food is in abundance, so they will rarely, if ever, use their current energy stores. Instead, they'll use nutrients that are immediately available throughout the day from multiple meals. Meanwhile, our cells become less efficient at managing those nutrients because the switch is turned on, telling them there is plenty to go around. It gets even worse than that. Bear with me. You see, when we eat, our brain sends a message to our pancreas. Hey, pancreas, we need more insulin. 
and the pancreas releases that insulin into the bloodstream to deal with all that sugar and energy from your recent meal. In feast mode, your body is always producing insulin. We know that the more sensitive you are to insulin, the more likely it is your cells will use the energy they already have available. But if your body produces insulin all day as a reaction to meal after meal, it develops a resistance to insulin over time, which leads to, among other things, diabetes. Now, all of this is well known. We're in the realm of scientific fact here. What wasn't known until the last few decades was that a state of famine can be achieved fairly easily. More importantly, that famine state has side effects that go beyond simple rapid weight loss. We're talking extreme regenerative qualities, healing at a cellular level, a refresh of the body's immune system. The list goes on and on. Not to mention, fasting goes to the root causes of our physical ailments and injuries, helping to heal and regenerate without temporary quick-fix drugs, simply by harnessing the power of autophagy, a natural system used by cells to cleanse it of waste and reduce chances of mutation. The evidence supporting the regenerative healing effects of fasting is abundant. In one breakthrough study done by the University of Southern California, a study the scientists themselves describe as remarkable, researchers discovered that fasting not only protects against immune system damage, a major side effect of chemotherapy, but also induces immune system regeneration, shifting stem cells from a dormant state to a state of self-renewal. We know as fact that our immune system controls inflammation, and chronic inflammation occurs when our immune system attacks an area that it thinks is damaged, but really isn't. A regenerated immune system, one that has been healed through the power of autophagy, can therefore eliminate chronic inflammation, giving millions of people freedom from agonizing pain from arthritis and other degenerative ailments. Or take Mark Matson, chief of the Laboratory of Neuroscience at the National Institute on Aging and professor of neuroscience at John Hopkins University. Madsen is a highly respected researcher in his field and has spent a great deal of time studying fasting and its side effects on the brain. In the journal Nature Reviews Neuroscience, Madsen relates how caloric restrictions, fasting, has a profound effect on the human brain. According to Madsen, fasting counteracts overexcited brain signals in children with epilepsy, thus reducing seizures, significantly reduces the risk of developing Parkinson's and Alzheimer's disease reduces uncontrolled excitation in normal brains, which can reduce anxiety and stress, and increases neurotropic factors, whatever that means. Now, I've met Madsen at a TEDx talk, and I have to say the guy is a genius, but so are many of the other individuals that I've quoted in this video. So much raw talent is breaking away from the food and drug industries to get behind fasting. And oh boy, you have no idea how angry that makes Big Pharma. But I don't want to go off topic, and I bet you're still skeptical. I totally get it. But here's the thing. All of this starts to make perfect sense when you realize human bodies aren't designed to be in that aforementioned feast state for years and years at a time. 10,000 years ago, if you were hungry and wanted a midnight snack, you weren't going to head out into the pitch black dead of night and find yourself a woolly mammoth kill it, and cook up a quick mammoth burger. In fact, our ancestors may have gone days at a time without eating. But instead of creating a low-energy state from the lack of food, our bodies instead go into a super-efficient state of energized hyper-awareness, where every cell works at its most optimal state to reduce waste and spend energy efficiently. This is pretty damn smart of our bodies. I mean, think about it. If we start losing energy immediately after not eating, we can't exactly be efficient hunters, can we? No, we'd be lying on the ground in our caves waiting to get eaten ourselves. The body actually achieves a more efficient, more mentally aware state if we're in famine mode. And again, I'm about to show you how achieving this famine mode doesn't require an actual famine. It's pretty easy to flip that switch. It's not hard at all to gain these amazing benefits. It's not as hard as you might think to trim down all that visceral fat in your stomach area, thus slashing your risk of certain kinds of cancer or an early heart attack and an early grave. It's not as hard as you might think to reboot your body's immune system, which in turn can cut back on years of pain from chronic inflammation. It's not as hard as you might think to rewind years of insulin resistance buildup 
and eliminate the threat of diabetes once and for all. Plus, you know you'll look great too. Who doesn't want that? So I wish I had known all of that when I first met Bishal Mahat, my unlucky Sherpa Rumi, that had to spend two months watching me nearly eat myself to death. To this day, I thank God for meeting Bishal as he saved my life. When I had lost everything I had, my job, my wife, my health, and almost my life, this guy offered me a challenge. He challenged me to get better by tapping into the body's own regenerative powers. And if there's anything you should know about me, it's that I don't back down from a challenge. Bishal challenged me to end my fat Buddha ways and my growing addiction to painkillers and develop a more disciplined body, a body that innately understands how to lose weight without struggling through diets or hours of exercise, maintain an efficient immune system, stay mentally sharp throughout the day. Over the next few months while we recovered, he taught me everything he knew about fasting. The techniques he says have been used for over 2,000 years by the monks and Sherpas on the Tibetan steppe. Techniques honed by an ancient culture founded on purity of spirit and purity of body. Even after Bishao was cleared to leave, which, if you had seen his injuries, was nothing short of miraculous, he kept coming back to see how I was doing. As my health improved, I realized I wasn't ready to return home. Bishal's challenge to me to take control of my body was all I could think about. And I couldn't think of a better way to embrace that challenge than to claw my way up Mount Everest. This time, I said to myself, I'm summoning it if it's the last thing I do. By the time I was strong enough to leave the hospital, I'd eliminated painkillers and dropped the weight I had gained in the hospital, along with another 10 pounds. And Bishal had told me that he was out near Base Camp 1, retraining his body to take on the demanding task of mountaineering the tallest rock face in the world. We met up, and I began training in earnest. This time, I wasn't playing mountain climber. I had a purpose. I was driven to make a change in my life. We trained and waited for the spring thaw to arrive. Meanwhile, my fasting, along with a new diet and exercise routine, had completely transformed my body. Where my gut had been just a year earlier, I had nothing but lean, toned abs. My arm muscles were clearly defined even at rest. And I could hike for miles and miles without breaking a sweat. I knew, without exactly knowing how I knew, that I was ready to climb Everest. I remember the day we set out. Bishal and I and a small group of Sherpas and perhaps a half dozen climbers. As we passed the ice flow, between base camp one and two, I remember the injuries I had sustained, and it felt like a dream. I almost died here, I said to myself, although they didn't feel like I had said it. We passed the ice sheets without incident, moving ahead to base camp two, then base camp three, and back down to base camp one to acclimate ourselves to the altitude. Summoning Everest is an unbelievable, painstakingly long process. Even the most prepared mountaineering veterans can be laid out by the flu-like symptoms of altitude sickness. Meanwhile, if you choose the wrong day to make your summit, or even if you set off a few minutes late, you could be trapped at the top. And that's instant death. No one has ever survived a night at the top of the world. We spent weeks moving between base camps 1, 2, and 3, watching and waiting for weather confirmations. Finally, after three weeks of moving up and down the mountain, our window arrived. We woke at midnight and began our climb from base camp four. Oxygen was a must from here on out. If we ran out, we were already dead. The climb went on for hours, but by 11 a.m., with the sun shining and a chilly spring breeze in my face, I had summited the tallest mountain in the world. Bishel himself grabbed my hand and pulled me up the last foot of the rock. The Himalayans stretched out before me endlessly in every direction, their peaks like islands in a sea of clouds. Scattered at the top were flags and memorabilia left by hundreds of past Everest climbers. I knew that some of these men and women had made the climb up, but not all had made it back down. Some died after achieving their greatest triumph. The feeling was both awesome and eerie. I thought that death was never good timing, but if I were to choose a time and a place, it would be there, after achieving the most profound thing I had ever done. Summiting Everest isn't something I can define to you, 
I can only say, standing beside Bishal that day, I knew I had done something good in my life. Perhaps the only good thing. That revelation made me feel good and bad. I made it a point then and there to help others achieve great things in their lives as well. And I believe a sound body and mind are the keys to doing it, which is why I believe so wholly in fasting, which is why I made this video. So now you know the whole story, the good, the bad, and the ugly. I returned stateside victorious and with a newfound purpose to study the Western approach to fasting and combine both East and West fasting techniques to create the most comprehensive guide of fasting knowledge ever written. To make this happen, I had to cut all ties with Big Pharma. We're talking total rogue agent here. And the threatening calls I began receiving told me there was no going back. I even received a few personal calls from my best friend, Eamon Phelps, who told me I'd be litigated into the dirt if I didn't keep my mouth shut. Yes, Big Pharma and major food corporations do not want to see fasting gain traction in the mainstream. Why on earth would they? As my friend Madsen loves to say, healthy people don't buy drugs. And people that fast aren't submissive to the food lobbyists three meals a day lie. But as I was saying, after two years of studying the Eastern approach to fasting, and two more years of studying Western scientific techniques, and after developing over a hundred working relationships, with some of the smartest strength coaches, nutritionists, and naturopaths in the world, and pulling a lot of favors. I'm proud to offer you the culmination of four years of study into the world of fasting, the Fat Burn Detox Factor. The Fat Burn Detox Factor is your single, all-encompassing guide to diminishing body fat, reducing chronic inflammations, and rejuvenating your entire body through the power of intermittent fasting. Every single step is laid out for you, as I left nothing to chance. I know, I know, some of you are laughing. <laughs> Isn't fasting as easy as not eating? Har, har. But in complete honesty, without a pattern of eating in place, you won't follow through. You'll stop dead in your tracks on day one. The pattern absolutely matters. In fact, Fasting isn't even a diet, it's a pattern of eating that makes life simpler. Remember what I said about flipping your body's famine switch into the on position? You can achieve the insane regenerative results of this evolutionary switch without losing your mind to hunger or crazy dieting that forces you to eat certain things, count certain things, lift certain weights, etc, etc. We're simply talking about discovering the ultimate pattern of when to eat. Again, you don't have to believe me, but you should believe Laura Evanson from Scottsdale, Arizona, who says, easiest diet I've ever attempted, and it becomes second nature after just a couple of weeks. You won't even think about food. Or how about Brett Johnson of Milwaukee, Wisconsin, who says, the fat burn detox factor requires no carb counting, no wondering which foods are good or bad, no figuring out which exercises to do, and no hunting down weird ingredients. It's actually easier than any diet I've tried. Amen, brother. And with the fasting system I've created, you will never have to guess at when to fast. You'll set up your own fasting calendar, or for how long. And get this, I promise you'll never starve. That is a total lie about fasting. You'll eat the same calories you normally would, only it's packed into a smaller period of time during the day. And it's not even every day. Seriously, I'd never forgive myself if I was promoting just another starvation diet, nor would I ever steer you in a direction that complicates your life even further. As if any of us need more complications. Life is hard enough without having to feel guilty about messing up your diet or worse, struggling to cook a certain way with certain ingredients and certain portions. Who has time for that? The fat burn detox factor doesn't restrict you to any one food source. You can eat whatever you want. Heck, go even have fast food every day. Well, okay, don't do that. Eating well is still important, and so is some physical activity. But you can also see phenomenal results without them, simply by using the fasting techniques found in this blueprint. My own life has been so simplified by this approach that I'm still in disbelief. Yes, I do work out a bit, but nothing crazy, and I eat about as much fast food as I've always eaten. But I'm in better shape, and I feel better than I ever have. In fact, my doctor even told me I have the genetic makeup of a man 10 years younger my age. 
Trust me, my ex-wife doesn't even recognize me anymore. We have a good relationship now, but it wasn't always like that. What'd you do with the old, annoyed, workaholic, depressed Tom, she tells me these days. That guy is long gone, I tell her. And it's all thanks to the blueprint and practices of the fat burn detox factor. And I want you to take the same control over your health just like I have. Just like tens of thousands of people just like you have. Besides, if you don't take control of your own health, others will take control of it for you. Your body knows how to cure itself. Big Pharma will only teach you how to become addicted to hiding symptoms and only for a short while. And we're not listening to the food lobby and Big Pharma anymore. And we've come full circle. Again, you're asking why I'm doing this. Simple, really. I believe that the human body can heal itself. I've read the testimonials of people who have transformed their bodies with the fat burn detox factor. And I watched it heal my own body and mind when I honest to God thought I was done for. I was going to die in that hospital in Kathmandu. I watched it do so at a time when I didn't realize how much I was craving a change in my life, so much so that I was depressed and considered suicide. But here's the thing. My problems aren't your problems. Only you know what you want to change about yourself. And only you can make those changes. No one will do it for you. I'm certain that human beings thrive on challenges, not just some of us, all of us. But it's hard to challenge yourself. You know what I mean? It takes someone else to challenge you. Someone to tell you that if you don't make a change to your life, you'll have the same problems tomorrow and a month from now and years down the road. I was lucky. Bishaw was there to challenge me when I didn't have the strength to challenge myself, which is why it's important that I challenge you right now to try the fat burn detox factor. If Bishal hadn't been there, I wouldn't be here right now either. I wouldn't be here for my new fiance. I wouldn't be here to see my four years of labor transform the lives of people through the power of fasting. Like Joseph Aaron, for example, who lost 40 pounds just by using the techniques of the fat burn detox factor. Nor would I be here to see thousands of people rid their lives of pills and medications for good. People like Mary Ann Conway from Charlotte, South Carolina, who had early stage arthritis and now lives pain free without her pain meds. And I'd never have heard from Jake Orland, who was diagnosed with Alzheimer's disease and reversed its progress through the power of intermittent fasting. As I said at the very beginning of this video, I'd understand if he didn't trust me, even after I shared my story. What you should trust is the massive amount of evidence out there supporting intermittent fasting and the testimonials from real people that have used the fat burn detox factor. And even if that doesn't convince you, I've got something that definitely will. I'm guaranteeing your satisfaction. In other words, if the fat burn detox factor isn't to your liking for any reason, simply send it back for a full refund. I'm that confident in the fat burn detox factor. Crack this ebook open and you'll know exactly what I mean. Yes, you may be able to gain an insight or two from Google search or something like that. But what you really need is a made for you blueprint and system for fasting that takes both the Eastern and Western methods into account. So it's time to make a decision. We know you'll only watch this video once after all. And I want to leave you with one final piece of advice. Fasting is just like every habit you've ever formed. Now, I'm 45, and I have plenty of bad habits and a few good ones that I've formed over the years. You do, too. Fasting is just like any other habit. And once it's in your life, it's there to stay forever. And I'm challenging you to get the fasting techniques of the fat burn detox factor part of your good habits. I was 42 when I picked up fasting. That's a pretty old dog, if you ask me. I picked up a miraculous new trick, and I'm challenging you to make the same change. If only to say you tried to change things around. You said you were tired of the belly fat, tired of waking up feeling achy and depressed, tired of the pills and painkillers, and tired of just feeling tired. What you need right now is a challenge and that's what I'm giving you. So go on and grab your copy of the Fat Burn Detox Factor right now. Your purchase is made through a secure connection. I would never steal you wrong on this. I went to great lengths to ensure the safety of your credit card information. I've also made it easy to return your money if you want a refund. 
Again, no questions asked. You have nothing to lose, only a more toned and lean physique, a better way of life, and a sharper mind to gain. And one last thing, send me your wow stories. I love hearing from people that have regenerated their bodies and created a new purpose in their lives from following the principles in the fat burn detox factor. I want to hear your story too. Are you ready to see the biggest transformational shift to your body and mind ever? I'm literally excited for you. Press the buy button below. And again, thank you for trusting me enough to hear me out. God bless, and I hope to hear from you soon.